So this is how to make fuzzy text in Photoshop. So I found the, uh, an image of uh, beautiful purple fur right there. And I'm just going to open my fur demo image. And this is kind of what I want to do out of it. So get started with uh, moving this window out of the way so I can see something. Um, so first of all, make sure that your image is unlocked. Right, and we're going to start with just putting a letter in there. So I'm just going to put a big F um, for fur, and I'm going to increase the size uh, by doing a free transform and making it really big. And you can pick any letters. Just uh, I thought I would just pick the the letter F for now, like so. I'm going to place the uh, fur image above the, the text. And I'm going to duplicate this layer as well. So I'm just going to drag it into the plus. You can also use the command J as well. And I'm going to make this um, fur right here a clipping mask. So you just select, make sure that you select your uh, layer, your image layer, right click on it, and then create the clipping mask. So the fur is basically now within your letter right there. So Next thing is I want to do is I want to put a background to it so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to just um, go into the, my layer panel down here, um, and I'm going to make it a solid color. And I can just pick a solid black or whatever. It's just the color doesn't really matter. And I'm going to move it down. So I can either drag it down like this or use uh, command bracket, square bracket, or alt bracket. And as you can see, by using the left bracket, it moves down just like that. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to load a brush. So I want to, you know, first I want to turn that back on again. And I want to uh, create a layer mask over the whole image that I've duplicated that is above right there um, by pressing and holding, I believe, Option uh, or Alt on your keyboard. You create a solid mask. So basically, the whole image here that is on top is completely hidden. And what I want to do is I want to paint um, back into my mask and reveal the edges. So I want to choose a brush. So I'm going to switch to my brush tool up here. And I want to load a specific brush that is in the, um, in the legacy brushes. So if you want to go into your, uh, your brushes right here, you have, you know, like I've already uploaded them uh, to get to legacy brushes right here. You go into your um, little uh, gear icon up here, and then you go into the very bottom. It says legacy brushes. These are brushes, uh, brush settings from uh, previous Photoshop um, versions. So once I have that folder loaded, I go down to my default brushes. There's a whole whack of them, and I look for scroll down, almost all the way down, and I look for a brush called, oh, I went too far down, called Dune Grass right here. And the Dune Grass is, I'm going to change the color of this brush just for demonstration purpose, uh, purposes right there. The Dune, the Dune Grass brush does just that. I'm going to pick a color again. It just does a brush. And if I increase the size of the brush using the square bracket, it just does this, right? It's just kind of like a fuzzy kind of looking thing. Um, if I want to change my, uh, as you can see, it just blends the color between the red, my foreground, and the black, which is my background color. And if I want to change that, I go into my brush settings, um, which is up here. I have it on the side right there as, as the shortcuts, basically. So I have my brushes and my brush settings. And what I can do right here is I can go into color dynamics, and I turn that off. So at this point, it's not going to be going from blending basically the color from foreground to background. It's just going to be solid color. So this is what I want to do. Um, I'm just going to delete that layer. It was just for demonstration purposes. So I want to. What I want to do is I want to make sure that I have my um, uh, my um, mask uh, selected in this layer, and I want to make sure that I paint in uh, white to reveal basically the image that is behind. 
So if I do that with this big brush right here, it's going to get really fuzzy right there. So I want to undo that quickly and I want to reduce the size of my brush, right? So I'm going to make it smaller. And again, in my brush settings, there's many, many things that you can do. So you have, again, shape dynamics right here. You also have scattering. <clears throat> you also have transfer. And you have, I'm looking for scattering, actually shape dynamics right there. You have Sorry, jitter. Yeah, on your brush, is there a way to change the angle of it as well? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm showing right there. So as you go to the very, very top there, it says brush tip shape right here, right up here. And then you can change the angle of your brush and you can see it changes the angle. Uh, you can see the little preview at the bottom. You can also change the spacing to make it looser or tighter. So I want to keep it fairly tight. And right now I'm just going to keep it just, you know, at this angle, basically, like 90 degree or I mean zero degree, I mean right there like so so this is what you can do so you can just you know start brushing basically the edges in your um in your mask right there to reveal um the edges i'm kind of zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing here a little closer and you can just start you know doing that a little bit the um you can also change you can also do uh within your your brush settings right here you can also flip the axis to change the angle of change the, uh, the the direction I should say of the brush so it goes from the left or, or the right right so you can flip that you can go this way or you can go that way so um, within the shape dynamics as well you have uh, an angle jitter right here you can also um, so right now basically it's doing things manually right so you have to go into your brush settings up here and you can rotate that to change the angle you know to go manually over the left edge you know you can flip your x again you have a little bit more of a control etc so you have to go kind of back and forth and you can have a little bit more control that way and you can you know increase the size of your brush or decrease it and make it really really light and and, and tight like this so you have that those options as well right um, another thing is again shape dynamics right here the angle jitter you can go actually um, you can select a direction right here and it will kind of follow the direction of the brush that you're um, the, the movement that you're doing on the uh, on your image so before you do this as you can see it gets a little squarely at the bottom you gotta make sure that this is at the at a vertical angle like this and here as I go around, it follows the edge of my letter right there. So it kind of, you don't kind of, you don't have to rotate it manually. You have a little bit less control of it, but it's uh, it's still fairly good, right? So you can just go like this, do that stuff like this. So that's, and you can just finish it off quickly, just for demonstration purposes. And like that, increase the size of the brush, decrease it increase it again just to get a couple of long hair in this thing just like that so this is one of the solution that you can do and you can create some fuzzy text like that another trick is you can quote unquote automate um, this uh, this process so i'm going to hide this layer and i'm going to um, duplicate my image um, my original uh, purple um, purple fur image. So I'm going to do a bit layer. Sure. And I'm just going to move it out of the way right now, completely out of um, out of the, the clipping mask. So it's just above, basically. Right. Uh, what I want to do um, before I do that, I want to turn this off quickly. And what I want to do is I want to go into my text layer, which is that letter F that I have right here. And if I go um, hover over the icon right here, if I press and hold my command key, which is Alt, I suppose, or Control on the PC, you can see that the hand has a little selection uh, icon around it. And that allows me to select the letter, or just the uh, basically the shape of the letter. It just makes a selection out of it. And what I want to do here, so I want to switch over from my Layers panel to my Path right there. And I want to convert this selection into a path. So in, again, that, at the very bottom of your of your uh, path um, panel down here, you have a little make path right there. Make work path from selection. It might be a little small on your screen, but you click on that, and it creates a work path right there. So I switch back again to my layer. 
I turn that on right there. I make sure that I select uh, my uh, my layer again. Again, I make sure that I have a um, uh, a layer in in, in uh, my, I mean a mask in there. Oops, forgot to fill it up right there, like so. Just like what we did earlier, basically fill it up with a solid mask so it's completely hidden. And then what I want to do here, I are make sure that you have. So you switch back to your path. Make sure you have in your uh, in your brush right here. You always you already have your brush settings uh, with the dune grass, and which is you know we know that it works uh, because it's already just preset that what we've done. And you go into your work your work path right here in the path panel, and you right click on that, and you go stroke path, and it will kind of automate basically create basically a, a brushing all the way around your stroke of your uh, of your path around your path. So make sure that you select your brush, which is your already it's already preset, and you can see you have all those options. Make sure you have your brush settings, and click OK. And this is what it does. It kind of automates it for you, kind of thing. As you go back into my uh, back into the layers panel, you can see that it has created a, uh, a fuzzy um, uh, mask around my letter F right there. And there it is. So at this point, you know you have a good, you know you have this option right here that we made earlier. That has again a little bit more control and a little bit more randomness to it uh, versus this one that is like perfect and kind of you know uniform all the way around, right? So there's the option that you can do. Um, the uh, the path that you have right here, well, you can delete it at this point. You don't need it anymore uh, because that was just to uh, to build your um, your mask with it. Um, Another quick uh, little trick as well, what you can do is you can um, actually I'm going to expand this layer panel a little bit so we can see it better right there. What you can do is you can uh, select, let's say, I'm going to select this guy right there because it's a little bit more random. Um, select all of those three items right there and then you place them in the group. And then you can do, uh, you can apply an effect to the whole group, right? So all of those layers that are within the group, you can right click on your um, group one, um, um, well, no, I suppose uh, panel right there, and you can um, apply um, apply filters uh, to it. So, for example, we're gonna do uh, we can do a uh, wait a minute. Uh, no, what, what what happened? What is going on? With my <laughs> okay, I'm having trouble here. Of course, a demonstration is never perfect. <laughs> Just for fun, Just to keep me. Uh, I suppose you can do that. Uh, let's see. Convert to smart object. Now it's a group. Now I can do um, some um, some um, uh, effects to it, such as you know, um, let's see, uh, layer style right there, and you know, just to add a little bit of um, basically volume to it, right? So I can go into my layer style. Uh, I can do maybe some bevel and emboss. And you can see that you, uh, if you move that, you can change the depth of it. You can change the size of it. Um, you know the the highlights. You know how etc. So you can do that type of stuff as well as, you know, um, uh, drop shadow. Well, on the black, it's not going to work very well. Um, but in, um, you know, uh, you can you have all those um, all those uh, options as well. So it's just a bevel and a boss allows you to um, uh, to give it a little bit more depth uh, if you want to soften it a little bit change the size of it a little bit um, the highlight mode you can pick a white and the dark pick a black uh, you can change the uh, opacity of it quickly and again the depth you know just for fun you have a little bit more of a uh, control over your uh, 
your effect right there. So it looks a little bit thicker and you can turn on and on, turn them on and off within your, um, your layer panel right here. You can just see what it does kind of thing. So kind of, this is kind of like a, you know, a fun little, little project to do. And I should have done basically probably, um, I should have probably done a, um, a duplicate of that group. So I still have my working layers. So I can always come back and then change things if I want to. But that's kind of, you know, what you can do with fuzzy text. So this is again, this, this is just the mask around the edge of the F. And then this is the one that we've uh, flattened or made into a um, small object. So that's the, that's the quick demo on how to make some fuzzy text in Photoshop fairly quickly using path and brushes and, and path masking and, and brushes.